Hey guys, David with First Place Auto Parts, and this weekend I was out in the shop and I was tweaking on the carburetors on my 56 Chevrolet, and I couldn't help but wonder if the self-learning fuel injection units that are now available, like the ones made by Holly and offered by First Place Auto Parts, wouldn't improve the performance and the drivability of this 56 Chevrolet. You see, this thing is a tunnel ram, and tunnel rams have very long runners and they're notoriously hard to tune for the street. Now I have these carburetors tuned really well, but the reality is when the temperature changes or the water level in the air changes, such as right now in the summer when it's very humid in Georgia, I have to tweak the air mixture screws on the Edelbrock carburetors. And maybe you're thinking about doing a similar upgrade where you want to convert your old carburetor to modern fuel injection for your classic American muscle car or truck project. Well, if you do, this video is for you because we're going to take a look at the benefits and the drawbacks of both types of fuel delivery systems to better understand if the juice is actually worth the squeeze converting over to modern fuel injection. So stay tuned to the video. I'm going to get back to tuning the carburetors on my 56 Chevrolet with my magic carburetor tool. Hey guys, if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're going to continually be adding new videos every week, and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff I'm pretty sure you're going to want to see. An internal combustion engine requires three things to run, and that's fuel, spark, and air. And two of those things, fuel and air, are controlled by a gatekeeper or a metering device that either sits on top of the intake manifold or in front of it. Developed by Carl Benz, yeah that Carl Benz is in Mercedes-Benz fame, the carburetor operates off of what's called a Bernoulli principle, which simply states that a rapidly flowing fluid exerts less pressure than a slower moving fluid. Air is drawn through a carburetor and through its barrels by the vacuum that's created by the engine as the pistons swing down on their bores. As the air passes through the barrels, a Venturi effect takes place where the air speeds up and passes by various holes placed strategically in the carburetor whose purpose is to pull fuel into the oxygen, mix it and pass it into the intake and onto the hungry and waiting cylinders below. And you know, at first glance, a carburetor, it looks like a chunk of aluminum with a bunch of holes and a bunch of screws in it. And the reality is, this is a very complicated piece. You see, a carburetor doesn't just dump fuel in your engine at a steady rate. Instead, depending on how much throttle you're giving your car and pulling back on this accelerator arm right here, there are circuits that meter how much fuel your car gets and when. If it didn't, the car would run pig rich at idle and dangerously lean at wide open throttle. That's why we have circuits built into the carburetor. There are circuits that affect idle speed, idle mixture, cold and hot start, cruise, and wide open applications. Many of these circuits overlap each other, meaning that certain throttle openings, the idle circuit and the cruise circuit, might be overlapping to each other, and tuning these circuits to work well for an engine combination is critical to a good running engine that starts every time and produces maximum horsepower while having good drivability. And that is a lot to ask from a chunk of aluminum with a lot of holes in it. There are a lot of different carburetor manufacturers out there. Quadrajet, Holley, Carter, Edelbrock, they all made good carburetors. But the reality is, all of them were nothing more than a controlled leak. If you want something more than a controlled leak, now you're talking about fuel injection like the ones offered by First Place Auto Parts. Look, fuel injection is a very precise method for injecting fuel and air into an engine. But the question then becomes, will it make my car start better? Will it run harder and faster? And for me, the big question is, is it worth the cost? So then if a carburetor is considered a meter leak, fuel injection has to be considered a precise leak. And the reality is fuel injection uses a series of sensors and computers to exactly monitor your engine's operating parameters to give the engine the fuel it needs exactly when and how it needs it. And to do this, fuel injection reads the air-fuel mixture at the exhaust via an oxygen sensor to maintain what is the ideal 14.7 to 1 air-fuel ratio. There, it precisely squirts the needed fuel to mix with air for any given situation in need when starting, idling, driving, or accelerating and can adjust thousands of times a second to meet those demands. And the reality is, is that a carburetor just doesn't have the mechanical ability to correct lean and air fuel ratios like a fuel injection unit does. 
you have mechanically set calibrations within your circuits that if you change the parameters of the needs, the atmospheric conditions, the demand of the motor, you got to go in and tune this carburetor. Electronic fuel injection will go ahead and do that for you. So the question then remains, is fuel injection, in particular retrofit fuel injection, a cost-effective replacement for the carburetor? And the answer is a resounding maybe. And I'm going to tell you why. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the pros or the benefits and also the drawbacks of each one of these systems. And so first, let's take a look at the benefits of the carburetor. And the first thing is, look, they're relatively inexpensive to buy, whether you have to replace one or rebuild one. You can buy a carburetor for three, $400. You can rebuild a carburetor for 60 to $70. So they're pretty cheap to take care of and to get. The second thing is a carburetor, it can be tuned to any engine combination. And there's a lot of information out there to help you with your tuning. It just requires turning some wrenches and some time. And the third thing is that if anything ever goes wrong with your carburetor, it's a standalone unit. It doesn't have electrical sensors or things to monitor to go wrong or computers. So if you have a, a leaky fuel gasket or you uh, have to do some tuning or a stumble, you know you're really dedicated to looking at the carburetor, unlike fuel injection, which it could be a sensor. And the benefits for fuel injection, there are many of those as well. Fuel injection, it gives you continually optimized air fuel ratio, which really helps with drivability. The second thing is it's very efficient. Not only is it efficient in regards to fuel, but you're also going to get less contamination in the oil. Look, fuel injection puts exactly the amount of fuel, especially at startup. One of the places where a, choke or a carburetor fails is in the choke circuit. It puts in so much fuel that what it, a lot of that fuel will do is work itself past the rings down in the crankcase. It's one of the reasons why we can go further with our oil changes. Look, back in the day, it was 3,000 miles with a carburetor. Now you're five, six, eight thousand 8,000 miles on oil changes. A lot of that has to do with fuel injection. And the final thing that's really a really good benefit with fuel injection is, look, these are tested units, especially the retro kits. They are sealed and they last a long time. They're really impervious to water and heat. So the need to repair them is greatly diminished over the early Earlier stuff. So fuel injection definitely has some benefits. You know, it's interesting. Each one of these fuel delivery systems have their very unique merits. It's not just a simple case of delivering air and fuel to a motor, even though that's ultimately what they do. Where they excel and where they have some drawbacks are uniquely different as well. And let's take a look at the carburetor, for example, on drawbacks. The first thing is, is that the carburetor is an old design. And the reality is, since fuel ejection really came on strong, we're probably not going to see a lot of technological advancements in carburetors, meaning we're kind of stuck where we're at with these things. Um, they're not efficient. They're probably not going to get any more efficient. The second drawback to a carburetor is that they don't like a lot of performance changes. And when that happens, especially when you do heavy acceleration or heavy turning or go up heavy big inclines, you're gonna get what's called fuel slosh. And fuel slosh is something that happens in the float bowls. The way fuel is stored in a carburetor, it's a reservoir of fuel. And when you move around, it, it really changes where that fuel goes in that float bowl to the effect that there's vents, right? There's atmospheric pressure. It has to be able to draw that fuel out of those float bowls. So when you go under heavy acceleration, and all that fuel goes to the back of the float bowl. What it's going to do is come up through this vent and it dumps down into the, the floats themselves or the throats and goes down to the ventry. Gives you a very rich stumble uh, from a dead stop, like at the drag strip. Or if you're an off-road guy and you want to go four-wheel drive and you're going up a big hill, again, all that fuel is going to reach those vents and it's going to create some stumbles and drive some drivability issues. The third thing that is a downside of the carburetor, even when you find a brand new carburetor and replace it, it typically isn't a bolt-on and go. Look, carburetors are developed for that mythical average vehicle. You probably don't have what's considered an average vehicle. You're going to have to do some tuning. It might be something as simple as adjusting the idle, which is very simple, or tweaking the air screws. But if you have a vehicle or an engine that's far outside the parameters, maybe it's a real hot rod or it has a big camshaft, you're going to have to do some tweaking with the jets the opening of the secondaries and some other things as well. So carburetors, like I said, if you like tuning and you like to understand where all those circuits come in, it can be a lot of fun. But the reality is if you don't, you're kind of a hassle. 
It's not too looking too good for carburetors right now, but before we jump ship, let's take a look at some of the drawbacks and hurdles that comes with fuel injection. And when you have fuel injection, you have a lot of components. And the very first thing that's gonna be a, a drawback, I know it is for me, is the cost. Look, all these fuel injectors, all the hardware, all the software, all the computers, it costs big bucks. Like I said earlier, carburetor, maybe three, $400 to replace it or upgrade it. Fuel injection, it starts at a grand and goes up from there. The other thing is the repairability. If and when fuel injection decides it needs some help or you need to work on it, the reality is you're probably gonna either need some, some special skills or some special tools. And if fuel injection leaves you stranded on the side of the road, you're probably not fixing that thing to get yourself home like you can with a carburetor. The third thing that's really a drawback is tuning. Look, remember that mythical car we talked about? The reality is fuel injection comes with what's called a base map, which means it'll get you started, it'll get you running, but if you fall outside those parameters for that, you're gonna to have to do some tuning. Now, some programs or some fuel injection units actually allow you to tune it on the laptop computer, but what it means is you really have to know what you're doing because you can damage your engine if you do something wrong. If you don't know what you're doing, it's gonna require an additional expense of a third-party tuner, so that adds on top of the cost to buy the original unit. And the last thing, the last hurdle that I think is a pretty big one is quite honestly, there's a lot to install. Look at carburetors, four bolts, an accelerator cable, and maybe some vacuum lines. Fuel injection, it's gonna be very involved, including the drop in the fuel tank. And when you upgrade to a, a standalone retrofit, you're gonna to have to put an electric fuel pump that can deliver enough fuel pressure and enough volume for the fuel injection to work properly. So installation, far more involved. A lot of wiring, a lot of sensors that you may or car may or may not be ready to have installed. You might have to add weld a bung into the exhaust system for the oxygen sensor, for example. So there's gonna be a lot of sensors and a lot of wiring you're gonna to have to do with fuel injection. So it's not just a simple bolt-on like a carburetor is. And then there's a question about performance, and that is, does fuel injection outperform carburetors? And the reality is that under wide open throttle conditions, again, say like at the drag strip, where maximum horsepower is being produced, the answer is simply no. Fuel injection will not outperform a well-tuned carburetor. Now look, recently there was a test on a 400 horsepower LS engine that essentially was the same. It tested an intake manifold and a carburetor and the same intake in a standalone self-learning fuel injection unit and there was only 11 horsepowers worth of difference but the reality is a lot of us don't just only drive our cars at the drag strip. We go stoplight to stoplight, we go to car shows, and that's really where fuel injection shines. It's everything under wide open throttle. Look, your part throttle cruise is gonna be very crisp. Fuel injection is gonna continually gonna keep that 14.7 to one air fuel ratio the whole time that you're driving your car. The other benefit of fuel injection is the hot and cold starting. Look, hot starting a carburetor, they used to get a lot of what was called heat soak, and basically what it would do is boil the fuel and vaporize it, making it very difficult to start. You don't have those issues with fuel injection and its pressurized fuel system. And the final benefit to fuel injection in regards to the real world driving is really the engine longevity. Look, the carbon deposits on the back side of the intake valves and the top of the pistons are far less with fuel injection because it is injecting precisely precisely the amount of fuel and air you need. In the opening of this video, I answered the question if converting to a retrofit fuel injection unit makes sense for you carburetor owners with a resounding maybe. And the reality is, it depends on what you want from your car and what kind of drivability you want. Look, if you just want to turn the key and go, fuel injection is a great upgrade for you. However, if you're able to tune, carburetors are very robust. There's a lot of them. They're pretty cheap. And the reality is if they ever leave you straight on the side of the road, you'll probably be able to fix it with a piece of bailing wire and bubble gum and get yourself back going. And you can't say that about fuel injection. If a carburetor is a machete, then you have to consider fuel injection a scalpel. It is precise in what it does. And what it does for drivability and engine longevity, look, it's something to be admired. Now for my car, I am gonna stick with the carburetors that are on it. And I'll tell you why. I have those things tuned to perfection, not only for the vehicle, but for the elements that I drive it, which is typically in a straight line, 
under a pretty good acceleration. So I'm not much for turning, I'm not much for stopping other than when I have to. So for my application, my carburetors work great. It's taken me a long time to figure out the tuning. And with two of them, they used to say twice the carbs, twice the trouble, and they're right. But if I ever wanted to stop or turn or not smell froth fuel when I start that thing up that burns your eyes, you better believe that a retrofit fuel injection units would absolutely be on the top of my list for things to do to my car. Guys, fuel injection's here to stay. It isn't even the wave of the future. It's the wave of the now. And I get it. It's not for me right now, but it might be right for you and your project. If you're wondering what the cost and what's available for your car, I'm going to go ahead and include some links to the Holly standalone retrofit fuel injection units that are available in the First Place Auto Parts website. So you can kind of take a look to see what's available for your car and how much it costs. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. And until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guards.